My name is Professor Jefferson Curtaniel, and this is my colleague and friend and buddy, Professor Ian Calhoun, from part of the engineering department, and we are delighted that you guys are here today. So our talk is entitled Course Portfolio, Effortless Energy for the Resourceful Morris County Family. By a raise of hands, who is from Morris County here? Professor Couture, Professor Fitzpatrick, how about from New Jersey? <laughs> all right, terrific, terrific. All right, let's get started, right? So we, um, first slide? Yep. All right, first slide, first slide. Back in 2014, Dr. Amy Goodburn from the University of Nebraska, Lincoln, visited CCM to describe the value of course portfolios. What are course portfolios? Course portfolios essentially is our syllabus slash clash slash outcomes documented on the internet. So the goal was anything and everything that we do in engineering, for example, should, could, would be documented. Hold on for a second there. Yeah. Professor Blum, come on in. Professor Tamborelli, come on in. No, this is not Tamborelli. Oh. Professors, come on in. This is uh, Russell Gambino. He's Russell Gambino. new in our department. So. Welcome, good, welcome. Good. Thank I guess you. Over there. All right. Thanks, Thanks for you. having us. Mr. Gambino, welcome. Thanks. All right, we're just getting started. So once again, Dr. Amy Goodburn showcased to us the value of course portfolios because it's a way to document what we do in class. You know, once in a while we get observed in class. Once in a while the students make comments about us either on Read My Professors or they go to our department chairs and describe how we do. But course portfolios are a way for us to document the experience of the students and document the outcomes. We also have the other objective for our course portfolio, which is to engage the community. How do we engage the community? How do we raise engineering awareness with the community? So basically, Ian and I were brainstorming and around that time, over in my home country, the Philippines, Typhoon Yolanda just happened. So there were 7,000 casualties. In addition, when we got the project, the Faculty Fellows Project, we just had Hurricane Sandy the previous year. <coughs> so we were thinking perhaps the best way to engage the community is to talk about energy, to talk about things that we can do for a normal family that they can do to alleviate post-natural calamities, all right? So next slide. So essentially, we created a survey that surveyed the students and their families as to what can alleviate or make the experience more manageable post a calamity. And that calamity could be a tornado, a hurricane, a flood, a storm. So you, terrorist attack, exactly, power outage, uh, unusable water, I'm confined to my house, entertain me, let's get some energy, they ran out of batteries, stuff like that. So we created a survey, and on the next slide I will show you the survey. But before I do so, before we do so, something that you may want to realize is the definition of engineering. What do we do as engineers, right? As opposed to scientists. Scientists add to the body of knowledge. All right, so they enjoy that. There's lots of ooh -la -la when they add to the body of knowledge. Oh wow, that could be good, that could be good. However, with engineers, no matter how complex the problem is, we love to solve problems now, we want to help humanity now, we want to advance humanity forward. So if it means I am bored, we need to address that as an engineer, right? If I need to automate things, we need to address that as an engineer. I have unusable water, we want to address that as an engineer. The store ran out of batteries. Hopefully they don't. <laughs> we need to address that as an engineer. Another one is how do we protect engineering of the future? We need to plant the seeds now, Professor Blum. We need to raise awareness about computer science and engineering amongst the kids. So how can we make engineering fun? All right, so those are our objectives, right? Engage the community and then ultimately integrate it into our classes. So we, we identified two classes where this will be integrated, right? So whatever three projects we're going to showcase to you today, they are integrated into two classes. One is the tech project class, Professor Calhoun, and the other one would be my Physics 103 Concepts of Physics class. There's also a third class I'm planning to integrate a few of the projects in. It's called Instrumentation Measure in 124, the forensic. How are you doing? Welcome again. 
All right. So I think we're off to our next slide. Next slide is the survey. All right. So when you look at that survey, look at your screens, guys. When you look at that survey, the survey essentially comes in two sections. The first section is what out of the 10 or 11 things here can make your experience post the calamity more manageable? And the second category is which of the five, six things, if you are quote unquote a senior citizen, which of the five, six things can make your quality of life much more manageable as well? So let's go back to the first section, right? So we surveyed students and their families, and as you can see from the results, they mentioned generator, uh, but a generator is any, anywhere from $800 to $3,000, right? As a CCM community, as CCM family, it's hard to satisfy that, right? And it's kind of too expensive, right? But we have a way to address it using lemon batteries. All right, so we'll show that to you in a second, right? Another high runner there, <laughs> is that fun, right? Another high runner there, right, David? would be this water filter thing, all right? Water filter thing. For some reason, we still have many communities over in Morris County. Come on in, guys. Come on in, Professor. Professor Hart, how you doing? Sorry. Come on in, come on in, guys. Come on in. Welcome. Of course, portfolio. For these blank surveys, and the students just wrote in their choices? Actually, no. We had multiple choices. Some were writing. There was a category there for writing. So that's where we got Pisa. Some were writing. 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 Some so after we talk about the survey, I'm going to go to the demonstration, and it's going to be interactive. And hopefully everybody here wants to burn some energy, wants to burn some joules or calories. Of course, Dr. Hudson knows about joules and calories, right? It's all about thermodynamics, right? <laughs> Chemistry, chemical reactions. All right, but just to continue on with the survey, we don't have an overhead in this classroom, right? But as you can see, the center monitors has the survey. So the high runners were water filter, a generator, and of course, you know, the solar charger kit is going to be a little bit more expensive, so we weren't able to accommodate that. So what we did for the past couple of semesters is really, you know, put together our heads, you know, figure out what we can do for the community that can, we can integrate in class, but CCM families, hi Shelly, CCM families can do on their own. Because that's what engineering is about. It's not about complexity of things. It's about addressing problems. All right? If it's all about making a pencil, then that's what we do. We make a pencil for someone. All right? That's what engineering is all about. Like the toilet, automatic toilet flush, I always use it as an example, right? That's very simple electronics engineering. That's just infrared transmitter and receiver. And we, when you are this far, the intensity when it reflects back is not as high. But when you're there, when it reflects back, it's high. So it turns on. And when you leave, it's less high. So it, it, it shuts off. So you can actually do this. For the meals in, 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 the, in, 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 the, in the room here, you can actually go to our restroom and try to kind of do this. You can actually activate both of them and just go like this. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that kind of fun, right, David? But again, that's the beauty of what engineering does, right? Sometimes we need to use complex chemistry, complex mathematics, right? But ultimately, it's all about solving problems. All right? So that's a good segue to our show and tell. And again, that second part of our survey, which is, to address the needs of senior citizens. Quality of life, we put certain things there as options. And one of the things that we put as an option, which I think is kind of meaningful, is sometimes when you have a natural disaster, you're elderly, you're using a walker, you might need a spotlight for your walker. No one has done that before, right, Anita? Right, Neil? And no one has done that before. So as you can see, we have Chuck Norris Texas Walker Ranger right there <laughs> with 3D printed flashlight oh. mounts which we will talk about. All you need is a flashlight. All right? If you don't have a flashlight, just grab it. It's walk. <laughs> That's Chuck Norris, Texas Walker Ranger, or Nimbus 2000. All right? So we'll talk more about that later. Okay? So once again, it's all about being resourceful as a family. We integrate into our class as a lab experiment, or, or when Professor Calhoun talks about his, his project, it's about integrating it as part of the tech project in our 240. For me, I integrated my project as a lab experiment. Right? And that's also a good call to action for many of you. Let's say, for example, if you want that interdisciplinary with engineering, if you want to showcase some type of fun engineering or science for students, 
maybe you you have a lab experiment, you have a lab experiment about lemon batteries, and you say, hey, this is pretty straightforward, and now you're planting the seeds for the future. Right? And when you look at the community, right, the community is a feeder to CCM, right? Right? It's not just job security for us, it's all about serving a purpose as a community college, right? And we're different from other four-year, five-year colleges because we serve the community. And then and we feel we feel um, obliged to do so. All right. So the next slide is what we did. What did we do? What did we do? The three projects is all right. The survey said they wanted a generator. All right. We don't have seven hundred dollars to give the families, right? All right. It's hard to purchase a generator. It's eight hundred dollars and above, right? That cost. All right. So we started with something really simple. Lemon batteries, right? Thank you, the dear. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to demo that to you, right? And everybody will be a participant because everybody will get a lemon. Each of you will get a lemon, all right? And a paper clip and brass hooks. And either Dr. Hudson or myself can explain the chemistry behind that as well, all right? Why it becomes, you know, the electrolyte together with the zinc becomes a battery. So we'll talk a little bit about that. It's going to be a lot of fun, all right? The second project is to integrate <coughs> portable water filters, all right? A portable water filter over there, which Professor Calhoun will talk about in detail later, yeah, that's the light straw as well as the Sawyer straw. They're portable water filters, but they are not integrated into water bottles. So what's the value we provide? What if you are a cyclist? What if you're so paranoid about not having bottled water you're not going to use a straw and sip from a stream, right? You could, but how far are the stream, right? So you want to reuse that straw. So the plan was to integrate the portable water filter with a water bottle, regardless of what type of water bottle. So that's where MakerBot came into play. And, and, and the fantastic thing is Professor Calhoun used practically what, like over six, seven weeks of your ENR 240 <coughs> for them to go through the entire experience from brainstorming a solution. How should we design that live straw integrated onto that water bottle? What color should it be? Do we want it modular, right? How about um, contaminants? How do, we, how, how do we address that? In addition, after all is said and done, after doing that CAD drawing, after doing that 3D printout, Professor Calhoun asked his team, as a student to reflect on the experience. And that's the course portfolio part of what we're doing here. To reflect on the experience, right? Some of them may have comments, like it's, it's in your handout. Some of them may have comments like, very meaningful experience. I didn't realize that, that we can do things on this earth. That's the great thing about engineering, computer science, science, applied math, visual arts, all of these that we do, even communications. We can actually make a change on earth for the better. And it could be something really very simple, and we're hoping that as CCM, as a college, we facilitate that by reaching out to our community, either through seminars at the library, you know, a post on the newspaper, college for kids, um, emphasizing to our students, hey, guess what, right? Feel free to bring your parents, your brothers or sisters to open house. We can talk a little bit more about engineering for engineering awareness. And our third project is uh, Texas Walker Ranger right there. Our third project is the spotlight for the walker, or my colleague Chris Calhoun. <laughs> a spotlight you think for the a spotlight for <laughs> yeah. I can use a limit. <laughs> right? What if you were at the football field trying to reminisce what just happened, right? Because the previous week, <laughs> someone hit you and you're right there. Like, but there's no lights, right? Because you're not allowed on the football field, right? You're not allowed. So, oh man, I wish I brought a fresh light. But you oh! can't hold the flashlight. How are you going to hold yeah. it? <laughs> Sometimes the silliest things is what engineering is, right? It's all about solving problems then. All right? And as you can see, when we talk about <coughs> that third project later on, you realize that it's such a very simple thing. Someone just had to dream up the idea. You know, it's kind of like for miners. If you know of any miners today or in the past, just integrating that flashlight to their helmet when did that happen, right? Mm -hmm. How amazing is that, right? Integrating the flashlight to their helmet. So little simple things. Okay? All right, next slide. All right, we'll talk about the build materials later. Um, 
Next slide. Thank you. Terrific. All right. So we're going to do the demo right now. The wonderful thing about wet cells or batteries is that it incorporates chemistry, a little mathematics, and lots of engineering. So the chemistry part, Dr. Hudson and I, we can talk about it, right? The mathematics part is quantity, concentrations, chemical reactions, stoichiometry, a lot of math there. And then the engineering, make no mistake, the engineering aspect is it solves the problem. It solves the problem. We can create a battery using a lemon. And using the principle of Ohm's law, if you put lemon batteries in series, you can add up, you can add up to the battery need that you want. One and a half volts, three volts, four and a half volts, six volts, nine volts, so on and so forth. Let's go to the next slide, and then we're going to talk a little bit about our showcase and interactive demo. On that next slide, you see two lemons, right? And when you look at those two lemons, right? You will see electrodes in each lemon. All right? The electrodes in one of the lemons, essentially, a, a paper, clip, paper clip. The paper clip is zinc coated and a brass hook. Brass is, of course, copper, right? It's almost like adulterated copper with some zinc in there, right? So it's practically copper, right? So the brass hook is like copper, while the paper clip is zinc. So when zinc interacts with the electrolyte, which is the juice inside that lemon, ions are freed up. That's oxidation, right? So when those electrodes are, free, uh, are freed up, it will go to the copper, and then when those electrodes go through the copper, it will go back to the electrolyte, uh, and then it combines with the H pluses in that electrolyte. The electrolytes are acids, right? So acids have a lot, a lot of H pluses, right? Hydrogen concentration. So there is some H2 bubbles that create, that's created inside that lemon. All right? As you can see, with two lemons, based on those lemons, for example, we get about 0.67 volts. Can you run things in 0.67 volts? Uh, not too much, not too much. But one and a half volts you could. So one and a half volts, uh, if you look at the slide there, you can run your wall clock with that. That'd be so funny, right? Like, would you have like a lemon right next to your wall clock? And it's running <laughs> after a collab. That's kind of funny, but you're planting the seeds for the kids there. Right? Hey, Dad, guess what? Hey, Mom, guess what? I'm running the wall clock using a lemon. Wait, did we buy a lemon wall clock from Home Goods? No, 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 no. The clock works, Daddy. The clock works. <laughs> but instead of using a 1.5 volt, I'm using three, four, five lemons. So depending on how sour the lemon is. What about the size of the lemon? Because in Italy and Spain, they're like that. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that would give you more. That's right. Yeah. So Dr. Hudson and myself. Right. <laughs> they're massive. Uh, so you like have to test. Space station. Yeah. <laughs> Take the lemons there. Yeah, so good is in the Philippines, it's calamansi. Right. It's like smaller lemons, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> but that's what you have to test that. So one of the things that we want to do, the moment that they ask for our quote-unquote app note, or they want to use our lab experiment, not only as part of the CCM courses, but to use it at home, one of the things is, well, guess what? Uh, you may want to invest in a multimeter. You may want to invest in this. You know, mm -hmm. take a computer. Maybe you want to download the compiler here. But it's fun, you know. I mean, there's little things that we can plant the seeds now, right? So that they have a, like a mini lab at home, all right? When it comes to the lemons, of course, they just go to the grocery and get the lemons. All right. Good. So once again, two electrodes. One is zinc, which is the positive one. The moment it reacts with the acid. The electrons are being freed up and it goes through the wire. Once it goes through the wire, those electrons kind of bond up with the free H pluses in the acid, thereby you have a battery. All right? And the, the only challenge part right now is how do you make sure that they connect up pretty easily? All right? So in our lab class, we can easily wire things up. But at home, the families, even if they're very resourceful, Neil, even if they're very resourceful, they may not bother wiring them up. So getting brass hooks from Home Depot, very simple. They may already have it at home. All right? Paper clips. Pretty easy. Everybody has a paper clip at home? All right? Be honest, did it come from your office supply? Here? Oh, yeah, sure. All right, so <laughs> home office, right? First of all, it's home office, right? <laughs> and as you can see from the picture, if you have a hook and a paper clip, and when you have another lemon with a hook and a paper clip, you know, putting batteries in series means the positive and negative have to hook up. Mm -hmm. So it's the hook and the paper clip. No wires necessary. All right? 
So after this demo, I'm going to give the floor to, to Ian, but but uh, Nidhi, here, good question. Can, can you substitute, say, a gallon of vinegar for of this? Of course, of course. Yeah, that's part of the Q&A. Yeah. Yeah. That's part of being resourceful, right? Yeah. All we need is an electrolyte to facilitate that that uh, dissolution of the zinc. That's all you need. How long right? does it last? Ooh, good question, good question. It really all depends on what load it is. And if your load is an LED, that's a little bit different. If the load is, like the clock, it might last for like three days. So, if it's a clock, right? Because a wall clock is just really very, very tiny. Yeah, Steve, go ahead. And we can eat that lemon, right? After we're done? You could, you could, right? We were all, <laughs> Professor Long, we were all born with antibodies. The skin's I have an antibody. We have a liver and kidney, right? So. Put some rust inside that orange. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so once again, guys, the key is having an electrolyte. The paper clips are always available. Those brass hooks are always available. Any copper wire will be fine also. All right? Okay? And that electrolyte, the stronger it is, the better. Right? Sulfuric acid is very strong. Yeah. All right? You know, our stomach is, is lined with sulfuric acid. That's why we can break down things then. All right? But sulfuric acid is very strong, right? But if any vinegar would be good, lemons, all that, right? So now let's do the demo, okay? All right, let's uh, let's burn some calories, guys. Grab a lemon, a paper clip, and a brass hook, and a multimeter. All right. So just grab one lemon. All right. Grab a paper towel as well. A multimeter. Yeah. I think we have enough for everybody. All right, because uh, ultimately, at the end of our talk, if we have time, a lemon, a meter, the meter you have to share. All right. There you go. Paper clip, one paper clip, a brass hook. And as you're doing that, if you don't mind, I'll just turn off the lights a little bit. So the lemon battery is more effective than us winding this up, right? This is also another way to generate electricity. We have a motor inside, and the winding enables us to induce electrons from the magnet. All right, but do you really want to do this to power up your wall clock? Right? Right? Like I said, you really want to, right? Maybe for kids. For kids, yeah, all right, so as you wait for everybody to get settled down, um, hopefully you have a paper towel. Start rolling rolling the lemon on the table. Get those pulps out. Get, get, get more of Roll it on the table. Roll it on the table. And what's the purpose of that? To make it more acidic, to make sure the pulp is... It releases all the acid. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Perfect. And then jam the paper clip in there and the brass hole. It's going to be a good look. Jam the paper clip and the brass hole. All right. And in order to use the multimeter, and I can help you, I'll go around. The multimeter, just make sure that you put it in VDC 20 seconds. VDC 20. VDC 20. And you got it, and then first of its Patrick, we could do it. share your multimeter. VDC 20. VDC 20. Oh, that's a good battery. Don't feel that. You solve the problem. Yeah, that's right. The things on the hatch, the miner. Yeah, you use them in the day to support. Does that make it easy oh, yeah. to do your hands in a different light? Yeah. Yeah. And I see the surgeons do something like that too. Oh, sure. Yeah. So they can work in the light. Yeah. Probably got a little bit. Yeah. It's funny how the old ideas. All right, let's start pulling out our voltages, right? Uh, are we getting some stuff? No. no. Yeah, we just have to make sure we make contact. Yeah, yeah. yeah you have to make contact. Uh, okay. Just make contact. It would have hurt if you touched No, no. Uh, look at that. You can touch it. Yeah, there you go. Guys, worst case, you can put the paper clip and the brass holes closer together. You can find another spot if you want, right? Oh, you probably want them close together, right? Uh, close together is, is, is better. Yeah. 
But we don't want to waste none. You want it to go all the way from one end to the other. Um, halfway through is fine. It's like the battery in your house. All right. Yes! 130 millivolts. Terrific. I got a Netzel here. 80 millivolts. That's so much, but uh, that's it. I'll, I'll give you another one. All right. One more minute, guys. And we're going to try to add up all our... All our voltages. Yeah, maybe that one is kind of weak, so feel free to jam it in again. Perfect. Um, if you have two lenses, yeah, that's a series of them. All right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and you know Hurricane Sandy's coming, like most of us did a couple of days or a couple of weeks out. And a lot of you probably stockpiled water in big jugs or pulling spring bottles or whatever else. And I heard a lot of people say, well, we filled up our bathtub with water because we didn't know how long it was going to last and it might be kind of, you know, fill with soap scum, but I at least have 50 gallons of water sitting there. Right. So I said, okay, well, most of you probably don't want to drink soap scum. Take the bottle that you have out of your recycling, dip it in there, and come up with a way to have that filtered. So if you look, Jefferson will have the two different water filters that we have. So we ordered these. There are several others out there, but just because of you know pay to play and all that other weird stuff that we have to go through here, we wanted to pick two water bottle or two water filters that were easy to acquire, cheap and relatively compact. So we have in um, on your right hand side the Life Straw, which is kind of a white robin's egg blue one that's kind of big, and on the left we have the little Sawyer mini filter. So we bought a couple of these. I gave them to students. I had them great break up into groups of two, and I said, okay, make it happen. So what they did is each student would bring in a couple of different things. So uh, on the bottom there, the middle shelf, the Arizona water bottle, this is just a proof of concept. So what the students had to do is step one, figure out what threads those are. There's really no standard, okay? One pull and spring bottle is different from something else. So the cap that Jefferson sold in that kind of simple gray cap, that is just a student drawing it, measuring the threads, okay, reverse engineering what those threads are, and then coming up with a simple cap and seeing if it would screw on, okay? So that is it without the water bottle. As soon as they figured out what the specifications were on the threads, we had them start to develop some adapters. And I gave them extra credit if they could have it adapt to more than one water bottle. So Jefferson, if you want to flip those up and look at the bottom of them, you notice there, there's a bunch of concentric rings. Students would come up with as many different things as they could. So I think that red adapter will fit a Gatorade bottle. Right. It'll fit. Um, it'll fit one of these. Okay. It will. It'll fit a Nalgene, which is actually a plumbing thread. So it'll fit Nalgene, Clean Canteen, a whole bunch of other ones. It'll fit on top of that. And the biggest one, I forget what it is, but the student demonstrated that it fit on top of like a big five-gallon Poland Spring um, keg, I guess you could say. Okay. Um, that one will fit on top of pretty much everything from a Poland spring bottle at the smallest all the way on up to a two liter soda bottle which is slightly different thread and it'll go all the way on up and then the Sawyer if you grab the little Sawyer Jefferson and thread that on top of that so this, this is kind of how it would work so the Sawyer would thread on top of that that would thread on top of say this so I would take my water bottle okay I'm gonna dip it into the nasty soap scum bath water I'm going to put the filter adapter on top of it, and now all I can do is I can take my water bottle, dump it upside down, and clean water comes into my glass and I can actually drink it. Okay, so this is the engineering problem that we posed to the students. We had them develop all these different adapters, and then it wasn't done. I said, okay, bring these adapters home and have your family test them out. Have them solicit feedback. So I think in the packet that you have, some of the feedback is from the students, some of the feedback is from um, families. But that was basically the engineering project. And students came up with a million different ways to actually have this happen. Um, I kind of let them say sky is the limit. The green one is actually pretty nifty that Jefferson is holding. It's non-functional because it was just a quick prototype, but it actually has a clamp on it. And what that would happen is it has a little rubber band, a really thick rubber band inside. And when you close the clamp, it actually seals this really thick rubber band around it so it can fit almost an infinite number of water bottles within a certain range. So students really kind of came up with some really creative ideas, and that's one of the reasons why we did this project. And Ian, if you can just expand on how they leverage MakerBot, how long it take? Sure. So the design process was, is all the students in groups of two or three, they would do step one. Let me just get a different marker here. And we took them literally through the entire design process here. Okay. So the design process, the first one is brainstorm. Okay. And we did this in class, and we had them do flow charts and a whole bunch of other stuff. What would a water filter look like? How are we going to integrate all the different things? Should the big threads be on the bottom or the top, so forth and so on? Then we started with the proverbial sketch on the back of the napkin, okay? So most people just grabbed a piece of graph paper. They started sketching it out. They started coming up with some rough ideas. And then they actually started drawing using um, 3D solid modeling software. As soon as they got the 3D solid models, we used the MakerBot to actually print all of these different things out. Uh, we have three MakerBots in this room, although they're all over the place. Uh, the big one, the Z18, is printing something out that I'll get to in a couple of minutes. The two smaller ones that are on the middle computers are the ones that the students actually use. 
So as soon as they came up with the concept, five years ago, it would have been very hard to actually bring that concept to fruition. Now all they have to do is, hey, I have the 3D solid model here, print. It prints it out, 15 or you know, maybe an hour later, they grab their part off, they fit it, and they say, oh, the threads are a little too big or they're a little too small, so forth and so on. As soon as they figure out that it's good, they can move forward to the next step. If it's not good, they have to go back and revise. This is exactly how it's done in real life. So then they come up with the 3D solid model, which we just talked about. They have the skills to do this because they've taken classes previous to this capstone class. So this is just weaving everything together. Step three was the prototype, which they used the MakerBots for. And I'm just going to put in parentheses here, we used a 3D printer. Okay. This is the prototype. Step four, as is often done, we need to test this. Okay. You often hear a Dyson going through 20,000 versions of the vacuum cleaner before they bring one to market. This is probably the most important step. Depending on how this comes out, we may need to go back and come through this again, or we can progress to the next step. We also solicited feedback at this point in time. Okay. What I also ask students to do, and I'm going to show you one such example, how to integrate this into the whole portfolio. Not only is this great for students to do, but it's also great to show that they uh, have these skills to a potential employer. Okay, so in the engineering technology and the engineering science department, we have an industrial advisory committee. We pulled them three semesters ago and we said, hey, what do you guys think about us having our students do a portfolio that showcases all their skills? They gave us a thumbs up. We integrated in with everything that Professor Cortano and myself did here. So I'll show you in a minute, but we had students actually label and showcase all of these different steps along the way. I had them shoot a video as a presentation at home, testing these different things, getting feedback from family and friends and everything else, and so forth and so on. So I think this was a pretty good learning experience for our students. It got them to think about how they could better themselves and the community and help people out. It's a pretty simple project, I mean a water filter adapter, but it's something that I think is, is pretty real um, that students have first-hand experience with. How did you get the flashlight? Don't worry about this. I don't need them. <laughs> if I had the flashlight on there, I would have seen that. Smart guy. <laughs> so these are just some of the adapters, and you had a question? How, did How do I... they mold them out of the plastic, though? The 3D printer just prints them. Literally, they just... Uh, it's plastic? It's plastic. So we'll pass those adapters around. But this 3D printer is printing out um, an ABS plastic right now. So this would not be the final product. Um, and we started working on that towards the end of the semester. So these are from the printer? These are from the printer. Absolutely. All of these are from the 3D printer. And for Swiss Patrick, you can see the load for this printer is coiled plastic. Oh, okay. It almost looks like a spool of weed whacker wire, mm -hmm. really. It's weed yeah. whacker, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's layering. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the student would come up with the sketch, then they would come up with the solid model using a uh, software that we have here. So as soon as they came up and conceptualized that model and said, yeah, this is what I want, it's so simple with today's technology, they can just, instead of hitting print and coming out with a piece of paper, they hit print and they come out with the the pen cap or the top of the water bottle. And depending on the size and the complexity of it, it could take anywhere from 15 minutes to maybe three hours to print something like this. So they would hit print, come back the next day, pull their parts off the printer, and then actually start fitting them together and say, hey, yeah, this works, or no, you know what, I think I messed up the measurement there, and it just doesn't, it doesn't work. So we went through this process a couple of different times. So here's just three different versions that you see on the screen. Okay. And I'm just going to now show you one of the student portfolios. I'm not necessarily saying this is the best, but it's kind of uh, representative of what I had the students do. And I actually used this as a grade. Okay, So I did not have them submit their final project to me. I had them actually upload it to their portfolio. So this is just one student's portfolio. Um, it could be a little bit more polished. Is that on screen? No. Oh. i got to switch the monitor. Right? Or, or their length so you can drag it. Okay. So I can just drag it over. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. like that. okay. So this is one student's portfolio, and I can't really see 100%. Yeah, you know, Want to blow it up? You can blow it up. <laughs> right. So this is one student's portfolio. Uh, you could show this to a potential employer. We've actually had a lot of employers say that they've hired our students specifically because they had a, a portfolio. A resume is certainly good, 
but a picture's worth a thousand words. Some students embed video. These are fantastic tools for our students. We also use them for outcomes assessment and grading because we've specifically asked for certain projects on there that are representative of the outcomes we need to assess, okay? So this is just representative work. If you wanted to download a resume, you could do that here. We can see Excel work in a whole bunch of different lab reports. Uh, we can see different projects that they've worked on. Um, AutoCAD 2D drawings, three-dimensional tool project that we have them do. And then here, uh, the student has uploaded their particular design, which was very complex. They have some technical writing in there. They have an instruction manual. They show all of the parts that they drew. So this is where if I wanted this particular piece, I could just come up and say print in 3D, send it to the printer, and it would print that part out, and I'd actually have that physical, tangible part in an hour, okay, which is extremely awesome. For From this drawing? That drawing, yeah. that's it. So the student actually drew all of these different parts, and then they fit them together as an assembly, so the student would have designed this, and here's the whole assembly all exploded, so I can see all the different components of it. So if we wanted to print out the red plunger, we could print everything. They printed a combination of them and got some shelf, uh, some components off the shelf at just the local plumbing store. And they actually, here's the whole assembly using all the parts. What's the life pump? What, what is the it? life pump, this is actually, instead of using gravity to do it, they figured out that the life straw could actually see a certain amount of pressure. Right. So by pumping the water through it as opposed right. to suction or gravity, they could actually move water much more efficiently. Right. So this particular student did it this way and they designed a cool little ball valve in there so the water would never backfill the other direction. Pretty pretty neat project, okay? So they came through, they did the drawings for it, which is all engineering, which is stuff that they're gonna need to do once they're in the real world. And they actually started making prototypes of it and so forth and so on and then they integrated this in with the life straw. Okay, so this is just one portfolio showing kind of the design process step by step. Certainly not perfect, but it at least shows what the student is capable of and so forth and so on. So, um, yeah. Any, yeah, Ian, um, first of all, you may want to mention that ultimately also our goal is to suitcase some of this uh, to the community. When I say suitcase, they may not be proficient in doing, doing that 3D solid modeling, but that brainstorming part of engineering, they can probably assist us. From young and old, from five years old all the way to 105 years old, that brainstorming part. The 3D solid modeling, we can show a video showcase of what we've done, or short carbon made, that'll be good. And the 3D prototype, that's where the CCM affinity comes into place. It's an invite to CCM to see our maker box. So, and this has worked so well with the civic engagement portion that moving forward, it might not always be a water bottle adapter, but in our tech projects class we've talked about, we're definitely going to do something that addresses some sort of social need. Um, it's, it only makes sense to do it that way. So, um, yeah, so we'll go back to here. Okay, and you guys have a question? Sure. And what happens next in real life after you've created a prototype using a um, 3D printer? What and that's, happens next? That's what we address um, in the technical projects class. And it's unfortunate that we missed so many Mondays this semester mm -hmm. because that's when my class met, uh, my tech projects class met. So we still got all of our learning outcomes, but the next step would be, okay, this prototype works. How do we actually manufacture this on a large scale? Okay, we have an order for 20,000 of these. What's the next step? Um, the students would then take that exact same file that they used to make the 3D print, and we would almost make a, a mirror image of it. Okay? And we'd have the students do that, and we would have them CNC the male and female halves of a mold, and then we can injection mold it, and we have all the stuff to do that here. We have the CNC machine, we have the gross processing software, so the next step, and what we're going to do in semesters in the future, is okay, now we have this model, let's make the molds, let's pick some environmentally friendly, maybe biodegradable material, let's injection mold this, we're good to go. So that's, that's and that. Anita, just to add to what Ian is saying, one of the things that high schools could be doing also is as fundraisers. They could be soliciting us for 3D printed stuff and it's going to be custom made like Randolph High School lid or Randolph High School bands or something like that. Small prototype quantities we can easily do with 3D printers as well. So it's a way to customize things that allows students to realize that, wow, the stuff that I buy at the dollar store or Walmart or Best Buy, I can actually do some of that myself. Right? And that's where the creativity comes. They can control creation, creativity to product. Right, um, Nadir? I, I just wanted to ask whether you had some kind of outreach to the community to publicize this. If, 
uh, as part of some kind of an education campaign of what the college is able to do, but also to give ideas to people in the community. It's something we're talking about. Schools. We don't have anything in place quite yet to the scale that I think it needs to be. Yeah. But I think it'd be a good idea to get in touch maybe with local libraries yeah. um, in Morris County, build something. Uh, they do display a lot of literature there from various organizations in the county, and I think that would be something good to find. Right. Just to get the ball rolling, and you don't know what the reaction will be. And then right, it's a great suggestion. Yeah, yeah, just give this to some of our subject matter experts in art, for example, they have galleries. And if we can do something similar in engineering, yeah, yeah. that kind of suitcases it closer to the community, because library, we get a lot of traffic. Yeah, from you, the can have a library. Library. you can have a little exhibit as well, yeah. mm -hmm. I think, on a Saturday, it would be fantastic. Sure. Yeah. Especially with some of the videos, because if a person's not there, the videos could at least yeah. show what this whole thing is all about. Yeah. Um, and the students in some of the videos, they talk about this. It might be a short little four-minute clip, mm -hmm. but it talks about, hey, this is the problem we wanted to address, and here's how I solved it, sort of thing. Or museums. So. How does the student get the URL for the showcase there? Um, that's another thing. We start the first semester, and it's something we started like three semesters ago, and now we're integrating it into almost all the classes we do, okay. is uh, we did a whole bunch of research and asked our advisory board and everything else. There are a lot of free portfolio hosting websites out there. Okay. We just chose to use carbonmade.com because it's like the easiest one, I guess. It's the most okay. user-friendly. And the reason why specifically we chose CarbonMate is because a lot of file formats we as engineers use are these wacky file formats. They're not like a picture file, they're like a weird file. It's one of the only ones that can handle all those different ones. Okay. Um, so that's the reason specifically why we chose that one. Carbon? Uh, CarbonMade.com. Okay. So they would go on, they would create their own URL, uh, upload whatever work it is that they wanted, and that's theirs, they own that. But we just, they supply us with the link. And I will just check it at the end of the semester and say, okay, yeah, you did this project, this project. They don't have to pay for it. They don't have to pay as long as you have five projects or less. Okay. Um, if it's over five projects, you have to pay, I think it's like nine bucks a year. Okay. So. I use GitHub. I don't know. I've never used that one okay. before. Yeah, there's a number of free ones out there. They're all fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. This well, one doesn't. They host like code and yep. things, but it's, it's different than that. So sure. It's free, up to. So. Yep. So. Is the department allowed to use social media to promote? We've talked about that a lot. But LinkedIn, yeah. Yeah, we've talked about a whole bunch of things, but for one of the reasons, uh, a number of our um, advisors on the advisory board kind of recommended, and I'm not 100% sure why, but they said from a legal, and there's a couple of other aspects, they wanted the student, they recommended that the student's carbon made site was their own and they just gave us access to it. So it would be no different than you going access it or some That's grandmother right. or some That's employer. Right. The it's the theirs and they're just allowing us to view it. Um, but they said as soon as there's a social aspect and a link between the two, that if for some reason they were showing an unsafe machining practice or something like that, that it could come back to us. Yeah. So that's the one reason why we, we kind of keep it independent. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And just to add to what Ian is saying, in terms of engaging the community, may it be this project or the lemon battery, I have a lab experiment that we can give to physics classes, right? Sometimes you have science classes in middle, in middle school that are very interested in, in creative stuff. We can draft lab experiments for them. It could be as simple as a lemon battery or as, as complicated as generating electricity using a motor or as simple as drawing something on CAD to print out something. So once again, if you are fathers, mothers of children who are in elementary school, high school, in the community, we can always work with the physics teachers or science teachers to and college for kids. Yeah. Oh, college this for is going to be a magnet college if you kids. offer it as a college for kids, even as a one day or two day session, right. it's going to go. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's the, not you know, that hard Boy Scouts, that. Girl Scouts, right. schools, yeah. libraries, and things, and you inform If you have no, anyone in this room, I would say within probably maybe a dozen hours, would have the skills not to print something mm -hmm. super high tech like what we have up on the windowsill there, but you could print out something like one of these mm -hmm. water bottle adapters. A lot of thought and design went into these and revisions, but if we look at them, Let's be, they're really not all that complex. It's the simplest solution to this problem. But most of you could probably print this out with about a dozen hours for the training. So, yeah, something like a college for kids where they're here for a whole week. By Thursday, they're probably printing stuff out. So, I, I think I think that would be a fantastic. It actually, it would be very popular. 
Yes. And positive too, because yes. then they right. say, hey, I did this at CCM. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So right. right. yeah. And then you have the right. ripple effect, right. yes. Good right. PR, if you can get to know our facilities, what we can do, and so on. We even have energy kits. I have energy kits in the back with yeah. solar panel, windmill, yeah. a fuel cell. We have energy kits in the back. Yeah. So if you have kits, you can just hook them up. <laughs> <laughs> the kids are batteries. Yeah, they've got batteries. Yeah, they're batteries. Yeah, they're batteries. <laughs> <laughs> when you see him coming from the yeah, planetary, right? right? They're holding hands. <laughs> That's right. So I think, um, I'll just check our time right now. Yeah, so, yeah, about yeah. The ten, 10 minutes left. I think just to wrap up, um, the Texas Walker Ranger walk over with spotlight. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to teach you. Did you? Yeah. Um, just, 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 just to close up the talk. Yeah, guys. Just to close up the talk. I think what's important is we looked at a certain portion of our community, right? And we want to make sure that we also address the seniors, right? So we were thinking of putting a spotlight on a Walker or the crutch, right? So if you look at the 3D printed stuff for this, the mounts. They're actually very, very simple. They're very, very simple. So it's, it's not about the complexity. It's about the problem solved. And if you do a survey among seniors, would it be awesome if you had light on your walker? I know two people. <laughs> right? Because yeah. it's dark outside. You want to water the plants. You want to survey the plants. Say hi to the neighbors. You know what? Right? My mother-in-law has one of these, I think. You just made a great idea. And you can't get a buy She can she can come I, over. I could put one on her wall. That's why we can make yeah. it for free. The only thing is she has to listen to our spiel. <laughs> <laughs> and you get it for free. Right? And as you can see with this, and Virtual Calhoun can talk a little bit more about this. Uh, any any flashlight would do it. Did you make that flashlight? This one we made, made the flashlight. Made the flashlight. Is that the one oh, right. oh, yeah. Yeah. So this one that's what we're making now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so this actually, one it uses a car yeah. headlight bulb, yeah. which some people might just have around. Right. And uh, a nice bulb battery. It's pretty modular. Almost any car headlight bulb will fit in there, depending, you know, no matter what the style is. So that's and it just uses powerful. It. It's yeah, really like, powerful. Yeah, that's that's only the first version. The clips are the first version. They definitely are pretty crude, but it just gets the students thinking clips. about how to solve simple problems. And you can use a wire or rubber band to tie it together or even a plastic strap. I think what's important is, if they want to do true engineering, they can grab any bulb that works with nine volts, yep. and we can make them a container, and that would take about, about like two hours, and that's it, right? Yep. right? And, the, and the, the interesting thing is, we can even teach them how to solder, or we can uh, show them where they can uh, buy some of these, right? All we need is a bulb in one of these, and we can come up with the complete system, mm -hmm. The enclosure for the halogen bulb, the enclosure for the 9-volt battery, these wires, and then the attachment. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really pretty awesome because at the end of the day, guys, we're not after complexity. We're just really after moving society forward, helping society, improving lifestyles. That's really what engineering is all about. Simplicity. Simplicity. I mean, we didn't have a project integrated into our courses for this one. But really what this is all about is, okay, dream up of something. Maybe we can put it together, right? Maybe something that goes around your neck that, you know, like maybe some type of holster, I mean, something, something. I mean, just imagine the very person, first person who would, uh, who would facilitate someone's turning the lights on and off using remote control, mm -hmm. right? That light sensor, I, I, can, I can teach someone to develop that in about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Automatic sensors. Mm -hmm. Or clapping. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. yeah. Yeah, that's a simple microphone. It's a simple, it's a simple microphone, and once it, it triggers the diode, that's it. Alright? The clapper is really what that is. Yeah. So you can design hands. We could, yeah, we could be. With a motor, a servo motor to clap. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, any other questions, guys? I mean, this is just a touch of what engineering this can do. Exciting, right. Right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very well, very well. Professor Wassel, myself, Professor Calhoun, Professor Fuentes, open invitation to come to our labs, shadow our classes, maybe do something interdisciplinary with us. Just an open invitation. With computer science, I'm thinking of like a smart surveillance system, right? I'm thinking of like, you know, computer algorithms that improve our sensing. Because in electronics, all we do is switch on and off and amplify. But some kids are looking for decisions and computer programming. Maybe we can work together, right? Same with visual arts, right? We work with Professor Whalen to help 
create showcase pieces for a project presentation. Maybe in languages, maybe a way, because I can easily display things on an LCD. Maybe it's also in Espanol at the same time, right? But I don't have the vocab to translate it back and forth. So maybe we work with you. But chemistry, the source of energy, when we talk about physics in our physics classes, we always have to talk about chemistry. That's why it's the foundation of engineering science, because all of energy is chemistry. So even that, sometimes they're wondering, because our physics 130 doesn't have a lab class. So maybe one of these days I can point them to Professor Johannesson and Professor Hudson, use one of those labs as one of the labs of Physics 130, because we don't have a lab in Physics 130. But in, but in chemistry, we have a lot of labs. Maybe one of your labs out of the 16 or 17 that you do could be electrochemical battery stuff. So, because um, uh, the CCM family, I think, is representative of the community. And if we all work together, I think we will be known out there as, hey, it's so interdisciplinary over there. Whatever your needs are, ketchup or ice cream, we can make it taste good. <laughs> right? Just right? Not together. Right? <laughs> <laughs> not together. Not together. But thank you for your support. And you know, we've been excited for over like months now to present today. So. It's infectious. Yeah, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Very good.